Welcome to part 4 of our guitar studio build. In this video we focus on installing the fireplace and all the wall paneling. As I stated in the last video, this container will be located in North Idaho where the winters get nice and cold. So Logan asked me if we could add an electric fireplace with a TV mounted above it. While I have never installed an electric fireplace in anything, let alone in a mobile guitar studio, I grabbed the bull by the horns and started building. It's a pretty straightforward process to build the frame for the fireplace unit itself, but figuring out how to install the frame and not get any movement was a bit of a head scratcher. My idea here that seemed to work great was to screw cleats to the frame that I then screwed to the studs of the Enzo Fest. This worked great, it was super strong and absolutely no movement. And here's a quick glorious shot of the fireplace before moving on. The cleats on the wall held so good, I went for the same concept on the floor. These probably weren't necessary, but I tend to over-engineer most of my projects. Before we got started on the paneling, we got to work on the TV mount. Now I'm sure the InsoFast studs are strong enough, but I didn't fully trust just one stud to hold the TV. So I grabbed a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and mounted that on two studs with a lot of glue and probably way more screws than needed. This worked really well as it made it super easy to center the TV on the fireplace and it is really strong. Both the TV and the fireplace turned out great. You'll have to stick around for the fifth video to see it all finished. Now to start on the wall paneling. For this, we used pre-finished quarter inch plywood. Using this plywood was awesome. It was super light, easy to cut, and it looks great. You may see and hear an air conditioner in the studio throughout this video. We were building this during the hottest time of the year, so we made up a temporary air conditioning system and it was a total lifesaver. Though the insulation does really well, it's hard to battle high temperatures like we were dealing with. My wife and I had a pretty good system for cutting these panels. I would get all the measurements inside, then we would go outside, and she would read me the measurements for my cuts. This one panel was a bit tricky as it had two plugs and a cutout for the window, but we got it. As you can see here, my kids and I had a lot of fun drawing on the insulation before we hung the panels. We pre-cut all the panels outside before installing them. We did this for two reasons. One, to test fit everything before adding any adhesive, and two, so we could be inside out of the heat with the air conditioner on as much as possible. During this project, we had a tendency to get a little sidetracked talking, so my son thought we were talking too much and not getting enough work done. So he made us a little reminder sign. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Before we hung any panels, we added some more of the PL3 adhesive to the backs, then tacked them in with 18 gauge nail gun. The back wall was a little trickier to nail to, as the studs went horizontal, not vertical. But with the help of a tape measure, I was able to nail them on with no problem. Twenty-four. Here I'm showing off my fancy art skills, and again with that reminder, less talk, more chop.
This was a pretty straightforward process. Glue, nail, repeat. Except when we got to the metal studs for the closet. Then only glue. And around the back door, we used glue and self-tapping screws. Please stay tuned for the next video where we install the ceiling and trim. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate it.